think this will be enough tomatoes for the first batch of salsa. I have a lot more. I've got a lot of peppers I picked. I'm gonna go out and pick some more. I like a lot of variety. We love a spicy salsa. For 20 years, I've written down every recipe combination I've ever made of salsa because no two years are ever the same. Depends on what I grow. In the garden, I had planted some yellow peppers and some orange, the Bulgarian. Um, they're like a orange carrot, tougher than I'll get out to cut, but they add a lot of color. And when I went out there, I realized that I have a lot of Thai chili peppers, which I did not intentionally plant. It's just what it is, so I'm gonna go with it. I've got some serranos, I've got some bells, some purple bells, a couple varieties of jalapenos, and a lot of garden salsa. Originally, I was just gonna videotape what I'm doing, but I find having this in here gets in my way, and when I start working, I just like to work. So I've got my water boiling. First thing you do is you immerse your tomatoes in boiling water for about 30 seconds, and then you plunge them into cold water, and then you peel them, and measure them and I'm going for 32 cups of chopped tomatoes and then I will get to the peppers. As when I'm making um, canned tomatoes, I use a variety. I've got Romas, I've got Eaters, Canners, Heirlooms, uh, all different acidities too, which is important. If you just can heirloom tomatoes, they're low on acid and they make for a dull tomato, but their flavor is phenomenal. So. I tend to mix a variety of tomatoes in everything, canning, salsa, sauces, because I like the variety. And I've got some beautiful pink tomatoes that are some heirlooms and some black Cherokees that will go in. One year I had um, green zebras. Those were fun. Sometimes I have yellow tomatoes. It all depends on what I get out into the garden. So you'll often hear this phrase, sun-ripened tomato, and actually this here is sun scald, which happens from the tomato being exposed to the sun. And it's very hard to peel, it's quite hard inside, and what a lot of people don't realize is that tomatoes do not ripen in the sun, they ripen in the dark. And you can see the sun scald here, it goes deep in there. So this year I had a few plants that developed um, a leaf disease, so the leaves died. So what I do is I'll go out and I've tried various things. I've done paper plates. This is a uh, useless part of the tomato. I've used paper plates and newspaper and I'll try and cover the tomatoes. The other thing I do with great success is I'll pick them once I see that they're starting to turn and I'll bring them in. She's like, who are you talking to? I'll put them in underneath newspaper for them to further ripen and to try and save them because otherwise you get sun scald like this one here again, sun scald, and this is because it's exposed to the sun. So contrary to what you believe, the, the myth, they do not ripen in the sun, they ripen in the dark. So different issues with tomatoes that I've had throughout the years. I've had two issues. One was blossom rot where you would get your tomato and at the end of the tomato you'd get like this brown spot. It looked like the end of the blossom rot and when you cut it open it went all the way through the tomato. Well that was caused from a lack of calcium in the soil. So I alleviated that by during the winter whenever we had eggs we would wash the eggshells, dry them, crush them and then come when I did seedlings I'd put some eggshells in there 
and then when I plant it, and then once again through the growing season, just add some eggshells. The other one is the sun scald, which I was talking about, and that's basically sunburned tomatoes. And so you can alleviate that by just making sure, it, unless you've got um, no leaf issues and all your leaves are healthy and they're covering the tomatoes, you can cover them with newspaper or something or pick them when they're starting to turn and bring them in and put them under newspaper. And uh, those have been the only two problems I've had. Okay, 32 cups of tomatoes. Now I'm gonna do eight cups of green bell peppers. So now I've chopped up more like eight cups of bell peppers and I was gonna put in some purple bells, but I was getting to be a little too much. So I'm going to save that little purple bell for the next batch. Now comes the spicy peppers. I wear these gloves, which are actually some of my art studio gloves. But what I do is I put in a little cornstarch so I can get in and out of them a little easier. And I used to, for the longest time, I never wore gloves. And one year I ran out of some peppers. So I decided that I was going to go and buy a couple and I saw these one's called ghost peppers. And I had gloves on, not knowing what they were, and touched my nose. Oh my gosh, my daughter came in to the kitchen and saw me trying to violently shove an ice cube up my nose. <laughs> I learned. So I always test every pepper these ones are, these are kind of a milder jalapeno. So I'll taste this. It's got some spice, but it's not overly spicy. So I'll go ahead and add a bunch of those. And I t when I say I taste, I taste every pepper. And that one's mild, so I'm gonna use that mostly just for flavor. And like I said, I'm missing a couple of um, nice, flavorful peppers. So I will improvise. And if your pepper is really spicy, don't add the seeds if you want it really spicy, add the seeds. And some of these smaller ones, like the Serranos, I love the flavor of a Serrano. And I won't scrape out all the seeds of these ones. The salsa peppers, these ones, which are one of my favorites. It depends on if they're really spicy. One year I had them and they weren't spicy, so I wasn't so worried about scraping out every seed. And one year I bit into one that I almost cried. So again, I taste them and then I go by what I have, how spicy they are to depending on how much I cut. So I'm gonna continue on cutting this. I don't remember if I said why I put cornstarch in them. It makes it so I can get these gloves off and on easy because your hands will really sweat after a while. Now this is a different type of jalapeno. I grew a couple variety. And this one is milder, but it's still got some spice. And there's been a wives' tale that if it's pointy, they're spicier. But slightly different, I forget the name of um, the large one. I'll have to look that up. So I will, again, remove these seeds because I'm saving the seeds that I want to cut in the small peppers for the ones that I may not remove. So I'll remove all the ones from the big peppers that I can, so I don't get it overly spicy. And my brother and my nephews love a really spicy salsa, so I normally will make several batches in a year and I'll do one incredibly spicy and then watch the sweat drip off of their foreheads as they say, no, it's not, it's not spicy. 
And the one year when I did use the ghost peppers, I've never repeated that, and I, I won't repeat that. Um, that salsa we had to blend with a milder one because um, it, was, it was too spicy. And that was the only time I've ever had to do that. So I'll carry on. Be a spicy, hot pepper year. And because my garden lacked the sweet variety of peppers to kind of add a, a little off balance to that, I'll probably be adding some sugar to this uh, just to give it a little break. The peppers I'm using though are quite flavorful. I've tested every one and I have a huge amount of salsa peppers, a lot. And so I will make cowboy candy with that, which is basically chopping up peppers with sugar, vinegar, and my family loves that, and they'll put it on pizza, on sandwiches, on top of their bowls of chili, uh, all sorts of different things. I don't like to waste anything. I also dry a huge amount of peppers every year from my garden. And I have dried peppers that are in the fridge that I always use. I have a lot of these ones here are cayenne peppers. I have a lot of these and I'll dry a lot of those. They're thin skin, so they dry easier where some of these peppers are thicker skin and they don't dry as easily as your thin skin peppers. And I always save the tops just so I can count them to put them on my my notes on what size pepper, the heat of the pepper, and how many I used um, for that year. And, and I've never made two batches of salsa that were the same. But I get an idea if I know I normally add five cups of hot peppers. I try and stay into that um, amount, even though, though it differs and the type of peppers I have differs. So this is just tedious and I'm starting, I started out with the bigger peppers and I'll get smaller and smaller and it gets a little more time consuming. Now, I wasn't going to seed all of these, but because all of my peppers seem to be exceedingly hot, um, the salsas are very spicy. And so I'm going to remove some of the seeds I'm not as careful to get every one because I really was careful with the bigger peppers to get the seeds. But I am going to be removing some of these and I can feel some of the heat through the gloves. So I don't know if I, sometimes you get a real hot pepper and you can still get it through your gloves. I will be very careful with my hands for quite some time. I have learned what to touch and what not to touch after cutting, even wearing gloves. And every once in a while, you might nick a tip of your glove, which I've done. Well, serranos are one of my favorite peppers for flavor. And some other things you can do with peppers. I've done so many different things. I've done pepper rings with certain variety of peppers, which I got some of those peppers in the garden that I might um, do. You can do a Tabasco if you've got a Tabasco pepper, and that's quite easy. You can do a fermented pepper with that or a boiled pepper. It's just a little vinegar and such. So there's so many different things you can do. And if you don't like peppers, you can make a very flavorful salsa with a very mild jalapeno just for flavor and some bells and some of the um, yellow peppers that aren't as spicy and um, go from there. So do it to your preference. These peppers are, I just picked these ones this morning and you can tell these are really fresh and crispy. Another thing I've made is I'll make pepper jelly, which I've got a nephew who loves that. And we actually started making it together a few years ago. Um, and you can put that on meat or take out some cream cheese and pour a jar of that on top and serve it with crackers at holiday time or whenever you want. So it's quite versatile. And with that, you just dice up what peppers you've got. If you want it spicy, jalapenos, bell peppers, 
you add your sugar, you've got your pectin, and then process it in a hot water bath for, I think for the small jars, it's just about five minutes. You'd have to look on the package. And I have some really old canning books that they canned and pickled everything from watermelon rind to some of the most amazing sauces. And we always said on a good tomato year, I will do ketchup. Because on a year where it's mediocre, I'll do canned tomatoes and then spaghetti sauce and then maybe some chili sauce, which just has bell pepper and onion in it. And normally I do salsa, one of the last things, using just the leftover tomatoes. But because I've got such a huge abundance and I already have them in the bowls in the house, I wanted to get this out of the way because I've got so many other canning projects, so timing timing everything, um, I'm going to do that. But then lat in year 2020, not only did I get to making ketchup, which came after all the other stuff, it was such a good year, I made two batches of ketchup and taco sauce. And that taco sauce was really, really good. So I still have some ketchup. So if I have a lot, I might skip the ketchup and just do taco sauce this year with um, that. And thing with the taco sauce, whenever you make that, you add a lot more spices than you think you're gonna want because it just mellows. And I found where I thought I had a lot of spices, it wasn't as flavorful. So always at least double your spices to get what you want when you're canning. I have found, in my opinion, might be different for somebody else, but in our household, I found that to be a true thing. And I'm almost up to five cups, but I want to get some of these Thai chili peppers and a few cayenne peppers in there, too. Just because I have them. <laughs> this garlic is so sticky. It's just sticking. My hands are sticking to everything. Sugar content is high. And we're garlic eaters, so if you don't like garlic, you don't have to put as much garlic into it. But because we like garlic and we go through a lot, well, I think we'll be planting, oh my gosh, next month we'll be planting a new crop of garlic for next summer. And it's going to be a pretty big amount. We like both hard necks and soft necks. They all have their different properties and storing ability. I'm dropping it on the floor. Did it with the peppers, the dogs come running and they're like, ooh, treats? <laughs> no, not treats. So I'm gonna chop this up, get this in. Now this stock pot is pretty darn full. Use a good heavy handled spoon. I have spent about four to four and a half hours of prepping. One thing I might have forgotten to mention is whenever you're canning, as always, use pickling canning salt. It's important that you do that. And as I cook this, I will be tasting it. And I've never made a salsa where I didn't adjust it. I'll either add more peppers. If I think it's lacking bite, I'll add more onions. Um, the only thing I don't add more of is tomatoes because I've got really good amount of tomatoes. And these tomatoes were really nice. Some years you get them where they're waterier or drier, and these are really nice and the peppers are nice i may i'm probably going to add more spice to it because i know how we are but you can always add more you just can't take it out so i will taste and adjust this over the next four hours and then i'll process it in uh, pint jars for 15 minutes in a hot water bath This is the recipe that I use this year, where you see like four Thai chilies plus two. I actually added about 10 more peppers. I didn't write it down, I just kept adding it. I do add um, a lot of onion, garlic, white vinegar, salt. I add four cans of organic tomato paste, just to thicken it, I add some sugar, and I always do notes and it turned out really good. This is the two hour and 15 minute check-in. You can see it's 
liquid on top, and this is what I'm going to scoop off and make V8 with. And then on the bottom is all the thick salsa. I've added probably 10 more peppers. <laughs> I'm probably going to add a few more. I tweak the sugar a little bit. And we'll keep this going for a little bit yet. And then when I'm ready to can this up, and I counted, I think I got about 19 pints in here. And my canner only fits 14 pints at a time. So it'll be two batches. We have the hydrator going with some peppers. It has been another hour since I've checked in on the salsa. And it's getting thicker. I did add even more peppers because it just wasn't where we wanted it. So this top part, again, I'm going to pull this off the top and can that as V8 juice. Sometimes I've strained it, but I found it's better if I just put it through a blender. And then the bottom part that sinks is all the salsa. It smells really good. <laughs> and this, I will, it can't tell, but it's a big pan. Are you talking about salsa? I'm talking about salsa, Dave. <laughs> salsa. <laughs> this is my little salsa munchkin. It is nine o'clock at night, and I just pulled these out of this, the canner. These first six are all juice, and then these ones are all salsa. And this was darn near a solid 10 hours work. I'd normally can that last quart, but my family requested it for this weekend salsa. So that is my hard day's work. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to go out to the garden today to do any harvesting. 